The number one mistake most people make when they begin creating environments is that the scale of the environment is either too small or too big. And the proportions are off and you can easily tell when you see it. So when you begin working on a new environment, you need to know the player and the world geometry dimensions to avoid problems with scale. So you'll need to know the character scale in height, average wall height, width and depth, average door and doorway height and width, as well as step height and depth. So in this tutorial, you will learn everything you need and all the scale dimensions in order to keep your world to correct size and build environments to proportions. So let's begin. Now very quickly before we get started, I want to mention that if you want to learn Unreal Engine 5 completely from the beginning without having any experience with the game engine, then I have a step-by-step -step UE5 beginner tutorial course, UE5 Fundamentals Volume 1, The Essential Beginner's Guide. This guide will take you through 40 videos and 11 plus hours and teach you how to use Unreal Engine to create environments with. There'll be a link in the description box so you can click over and check it out. Now on to the tutorial. First, let's cover some important things you need to know about scale. Scale and dimensions will always be relative to the game and the environment you are creating. This means that the art style and the gameplay mechanics will determine the size of the world and the scale of your props. So for certain games, you may need to scale the props bigger than the actual real size dimensions in order to fit within the world and how the player moves and jumps on top of them and just how the player sees them inside the game. So the art style and gameplay has a lot to do with the size of the world and the environments you create. And realistic environments that match dimensions from real world will often look smaller inside Unreal Engine 5. So if you take something from the real world and take the measurements of this and try to replicate it for Unreal Engine 5, you may find yourself looking at that prop or that environment and it will look smaller and you'll find yourself scaling things up. So you'll have to make adjustments. So you'll have to make constant adjustments to the environments and the props that you create so they look correct inside the game. So remember, everything is relative to the player and how the player sees the world inside your game when they're playing it. So use the dimensions in this tutorial as a starting point, but you will need to tweak them to the player scale you are using and the game and the environment that you are creating. So let's talk about the actual dimensions that Unreal Engine uses. So Unreal Engine uses centimeters as their measurement system. And in UE5, centimeters are called Unreal Units. So if you hear people say Unreal Units, just know that it is centimeters and vice versa. And one Unreal Unit equals to one centimeter. So if we jump over to Unreal Engine 5, you have a way to begin to look at the grid as a way to measure your environments. And if you take a look at the top right of the viewport, you will have grid snap sizes. This is going to be your first go to to begin creating environments to be able to snap things together which is very important for environment creation. But this number is set to Unreal Units or centimeters. So right now at the moment my snap sizes right here is set to 10 or 10 Unreal Units. So if I jump over to a top view or any orthographic view, let's go to top and I zoom in a little closer. Uh, let me come over to the character. If I zoom in a little closer each grid unit right here this square is equal to 10 centimeters because this is what we currently have set as our grid snap size if i left click we can change this to any other size so if i go up to 100 now each grid unit is equal to 100 centimeters you can see it got bigger now i can go larger or we can go smaller let's go all the way down to one so i need to zoom in very close so now because we changed our grid snap size, we are now looking at each grid unit. This square is one centimeter. So this can begin to help you to look at the world and the grid sizes and use it to measure distances as well as ability for you to snap things at a certain snap size value. So everything will be aligned together. So because we have set this to one, uh, if I jump over, let's go to perspective viewport. My grid snap size is now set to one. So if I begin to drag any of these static meshes that I have for this tutorial, uh, little templates that I created for scale, if I begin to drag this, you can see that each static mesh, each object that I will drag is being snapped at one centimeter, one unreal unit across the floor. I can go ahead and up this to let's say 
50. You can also see our perspective viewport does have a grid. It's very difficult to tell, but uh, it changed. So if I go higher, you can see that grid does change. So you do have grid inside the perspective viewport. But now if I go ahead and begin to drag any of these objects, they will now snap at a hundred unreal units across when I begin to drag them. So now that you know that one unreal unit equals to one centimeter, you can begin to change your grid snap sizes in order to use it as a measurement system, as well as ability for you to snap objects to each other and across your world at a specific snap size. Now, in addition to this number, you have a way to measure things inside Unreal. And this has to be done inside orthographic viewport. So actually, let's go to one of the side views. Let's go ahead and make this larger. And I'm going to lower this down to 10. So in order to measure things and see how big they are in centimeters or Unreal units, Inside in any orthographic viewports, if you middle mouse click and drag, this will give you a ruler to measure distances. So if I begin to just, let's say I want to see how large certain distance is, middle mouse click and drag, and now I can see that this distance right here is 100 unreal units or 100 centimeters. So this is another very useful and helpful tool to see how big things are. Now that you know the measurement system in Unreal Engine, what the grid snap sizes are, and how to use the measuring tool. We need some kind of a starting point in order to begin creating the architecture, the environments themselves, and what the sizes of the architecture, average architecture needs to be. And everything should start from the player. And the average character height in Unreal is 180 centimeters in height. So it's roughly about six feet. And that's your starting point, this character height. Now, again, Depending on the game, you may have a custom character that will be taller or smaller. So everything has to be related back to the character that you are using for your environment, for your game. But in Unreal, you will have a mannequin that you could use as a starting point, as a beginning character height, which is 180 centimeters. And this is going to be your go-to as you begin. So back in Unreal Engine 5, I already have this mannequin inserted into the map. And I will show you where to get them. So you can have the same one and you can use it as a character reference scale. But if I go ahead and zoom in on this one and let's jump over to the orthographic viewport so we can measure the distance in height now that we know how. Let's go to side view. So if I go ahead and uh, I'm still working on a 10 grid unit system. And this way I can just measure this distance from the ground. Middle muscle can drag all the way up. And you can see this height is 180 units. Actually, if I, let's go smaller, if I want to be more precise. Let's middle mouse click and drag all the way up to the top. It is 180 units tall. So that's the height of the character that you need to begin with. And from here, you can begin to determine the size of the walls, size of the props, and everything else you build in the world. And this mannequin, this character reference scale, should be used inside every environment you create. So this way you judge proportion of everything you build to this character reference. So now let's cover some of the common ways you can get this character reference and some other variation you can use. So the easiest way to have something to measure your distances to, to a character height to the character in game is not to use a mannequin, but you can use a simple cube, a static mesh cube, that's going to give you the width, the depth and the height of a player character in game. This is going to be probably the easiest one to use. It doesn't have the human scale proportions of the mannequin, but it does have the height and the depth and the width that's equal to a human reference scale. This cube, well, let's jump over to one of the orthographic viewports. This cube is 50 in depth and width, 50 units or 50 centimeters. And of course, it's 180 units in height. And you can export this from your 3D modeling application and then import it to use inside Unreal. Or you can use the modeling mode. So I'll show you how to do that really quick. So if you want to use the basic cube and you don't want to use the mannequin, use the static mesh. And if you, you don't want to export one from your 3D modeling application, just uh, create one quickly from uh, the modeling mode. You would switch over to the modeling mode, Shift-5, the shortcut key. Click on the box. This is your template. So I'm going to left click to place it. I still have not created it yet. This is just a template right now. And with it still being active, go back to the modeling mode and to this detail panel. And uh, under width, I will set it to 50. 
depth will be also 50 and height will be 180. And then you would hit accept. And here you would have static mesh. Let's go back to selection mode. And here you have exact same cube, which uh, is very similar to the height, the depth and the width of a character in game. Now, if you want to use a mannequin instead, something a little bit more detailed for a human reference scale, such as this mannequin, you can get access to this mannequin and a few additional ones if you create a project and include third person game template. So during project creation screen, when you go to games, if you include third person game template, you will get access to multiple different mannequins that you can use as a scale reference. So create a project, use third person. And then inside the content browser, you will have a folder called characters. And inside here, you will have mannequin UE4. So if you go in here and go to meshes folder, the first one you can use is this SK underscore mannequin. And you would just navigate to this folder to this skeletal mesh left click hold and drag right into your level. And you will have a character reference to use. Now a few other ones is if you go back out to the mannequins folder instead, and then go into the meshes folder, you will have four additional ones to use. So you will have SKM Manny, as well as Manny Simple, and SKM Quinn and Quinn Simple. So you can use any of these four and just drag them into your level. Let me go ahead and rotate them 90 degrees so they're facing both towards us. And you can use any of these. And you can see they're all the same height and same features for a human reference scale. So use any of these and you would just simply insert one into your level and then you can just duplicate them all the way across your map, place them next to your geometry, to your architecture, all over the place. And that way when you build your environments and your architecture, you can go ahead and reference these and just see how close and how proportional your architecture and your geometry is to the player character in game. Extremely useful and very helpful. This is why you often see screenshots and videos with dozens of these mannequins duplicated across maps and entire environments. And this is to help the artist create the environment to scale and to judge proportions. If you already have a project created, and let's say you want to add these mannequins to use and you don't want to start a brand new project, you can actually add a third person game template and all the files associated with it into an existing project. So let's say you created first person or something else. You will not have access to these mannequins. But to add a third person into an existing project, just go to add and then go to add feature or content pack, choose blueprint, and then you can choose third person game template and then add it into an existing project. And you will have access to that characters folder and the meshes within it. Also, in addition to one of the old ways is inside the marketplace, you can download UE4 Mannequin Mobile. This was something that was used before UE5, and it gives you a UE4 mannequin to include and add to any project that you create. Now, this was used for UE4, but it can be used for UE5 as well. So this is another option if you don't use a third-person game template or a custom game character that you import or a box that I showed you in the beginning. You can use this UE4 mannequin from the previous Unreal version. So the way you would do this is you have to go to Marketplace and then search for products, mannequin, and then it will be this one right here, UE4 Mannequin Mobile. Let's go ahead, it's gonna be free, so you just go in here. And then right now I already have Add to Project because I already have it, but for you it'll say uh, get it or free to download or something like that. Just click on it so it downloads to your computer and then you would be able to add it to a project here or once you already have it and possess it, it's on your computer and it's part of your account, you would just go back to the library and go to your vault section and search for mannequin. And here it is, you for mannequin pro mobile. And then you would just add it to project. So you just click add to project. Since this is a previous version, you, it will say no compatible user projects found. So there are no projects that I currently have that are compatible with this UE4 mannequin mobile from the previous version, but I can force it. I can force add this into any existing project. So just click on show all projects Choose the project you would want to add it to. So for example, let's do tutorial. It still says it's not compatible, but just use this drop down menu and choose the latest version that it is compatible, which is 4.24 at this moment. And then click add to project. And then it would be added into an existing project of your choice, whether it's 
Unreal Engine 4 or Unreal Engine 5. Now, I'm not going to add it because I already have mannequins to use, but this is another option that you could use at any time. Now that you know how to include a player reference scale inside your environment to judge scale and proportions, you need to know what are the average architecture dimensions for walls, doors and doorways, and stairs. So here they are. And these are the starting points you should begin with, but then of course adjust to your architecture style and how it feels and looks inside the game based on what you're going for. So the standard wall height and width is about 300 to 400 Unreal units. And the depth of a wall is 20 Unreal units. So here in this map, I have a few examples of walls, windows, doorways, and a few environments with specific sizes of the ones that we are going to cover in the, the standard height and the depth of the walls and the doorways. So for walls, here is a wall that is 300 units in height, 300 by 300. And here's a wall that's 300 in width and 400 in height. So of course we can use our character reference. So let me go ahead and move it closer. So I'll just move it next to this wall. And I'm going to also duplicate it for this. And I'm going to press F11 to get a large view so we can see better. So by looking at this, we can see how tall the wall will be compared to the player reference in game. And these are good sizes to start with. 300 in height or 400 in height. Now, oftentimes, using the player reference scale is a great way to judge dimensions and proportion, but also you always want to spawn inside the game as your character and run around and see it, what the player would see. So let's take a look at these two walls uh, when I spawn next to them. So I'm going to play inside this map, and I'm spawned as a third-person character in game, and I just walk up to this. Let me go uh, make this bigger again. So if I walk up to this wall, we can see how big it is. And I can walk up to this wall and see how big it is. You can see that the 400 wall, of course, looks taller. But these two sizes are pretty good and will get you a lot of mileage from them. I also created a couple of environments back here. So here's a, a room interior with 300 height of walls. So if I walk inside here, you can kind of see and judge much better when you're inside this environment as a player running around. So it has a certain feel, uh, more of a residential type of uh, interior. Now, if I go into a room that's 400 in height, it's a little bit more spacious, and it doesn't feel more. It doesn't feel more of a residential, but it feels more maybe an office type of. So this is another uh, good height, but depending again, I, it's all relevant. What type of environment, what type of architecture you're creating? But these sizes, 300 to 400, is a good standard wall height for doors. A good standard door width is going to be anywhere between 110 and 140 Unreal units. And the standard door height, anywhere between 210 and 230 Unreal units. So here are two examples of a wall that's 300 units and a wall of 400 units. But the doorway is 230 in height and 140 in width. So if I jump over to one of the orthographic viewports, let's take, take this small one. And let's go to right here, and I'm going to make that larger. So if I zoom in a little closer, here, the door opening, the doorway, if I middle mouse click and drag all the way to the top, the height of this is 230, and the width of the opening for the doorway, and the door is 140. So let's jump back. So now that this is a pretty good size for third person as well as first person. So if I spawn, and I run through this, it, it feels right. As you walk through this, uh, you might make it a little bit smaller, Maybe shorter in height for the third person, but uh, it f it feels proportionally correct. And this is the same one, just for a taller wall. And of course, the door should fit into the doorway, so the size of this door is the same as the door opening. So now, just uh, having a little bit more of a point of reference, if I spawn here, walking through into the interior with walls of 400 units in height. The door opening feels pretty good. And the same size for this doorway also feels pretty good for a smaller, more residential type of room height. So this is a good standard door width and height for you to use to start with. When it comes to windows, there's no standard width or height for a window opening. It all depends on the architecture and the style that you're going for. Because some windows start at the bottom, some are just at the top, some are narrow, some are rounded, 
So I don't have a number for you to use for windows. It's all a matter of if you get the wall height and the width right, the opening for the window is all up to you and what you're going for. So here I have just a quick cutout of two different walls. One that's a little taller, one that's a little smaller for the different height of walls. So this is more of a kind of residential opening. And here's a little bit more taller, uh, bigger window opening. So as long as you get the wall height, the one that you want, then the opening for the window, that's going to be up to you and the size of it. And the last standard dimensions you need to know about are steps. So a good standard step height is 15 unreal units. And the length or the depth of that step is, is 30 unreal units. So for this example, I'm going to use the modeling mode. And let me come over here. And I'm going to click over to under shapes. We have stairs. So let me go ahead. Uh, actually, let me create it next to. Uh, I'll drag the scale reference next to the these steps a little later. So let's create a set of steps. I'm going to left click to place it, and let's uh, do the step width. How wide these steps are? Let's do a 300. So we get a little wider. Now for each step, let's keep the defaults for step height at 20 and step depth at 30. Let's just keep these. And now I'm going to hit accept. Now let me drag one of these scale references. I'm going to go back to selection. Just going to drag one of these, duplicate it, and just place it next to it. So you can see the default dimensions for these steps, uh, they're okay, but to me they look a little too tall at 20 units. So if I spawn and start walking next to them and start walking up, the, it feels all right, but uh, again, it all depends on the architecture style and what these steps are doing, but uh, standard size wise, they feel a little too tall, uh, a little bit, tiny bit disproportionate. Now, if I create the standard sizes, the ones that I showed you, they will feel and look a little bit more right. So let's create this set of stairs. I'm going to place it right here. And instead of using step height at 20, I'm going to use them at 15. And step depth, I'm going to keep it at 30. Let's uh, increase the number of steps. Let's go to 20. Actually, that's too much. Let's do 15. And let's hit accept. Now, if I go ahead and go back to selection and spawn. Now, when I walk on these stairs, these stairs feel and they look a little bit more correct in terms of height. The depth is perfect. And the height feels uh, uh, just much better at 15 than they do in 20. So these are pretty good looking steps for most of the stairs that you would need. 15 in height, 30 in depth. But like I said, all these dimensions are your starting point and it all depends on the architecture style where these stairs are placed. Same for the walls, same for the doors and the windows. Everything is relative and everything is relative to not just the scale reference, but as well as the art style and the gameplay mechanics. Another important thing about steps is you have to take into consideration the amount of steps that you would want to go up in order to reach the second floor. So if you have a wall that's 300 units in height and you are trying to have stairs to come up to that height. So in this case, I don't have enough steps to reach the second floor. So I would need to recreate this and add the amount of steps to reach the second floor. So you also have to take that into consideration. How big do the steps need to be to fit within a certain part of your environment and how many steps do you need to reach up? And the height of each step will determine the amount of steps. So let's go back to modeling really quick and let's do another set of stairs. So in this case, since my height is at 15 units, to reach 300 units, I would need, I believe it's 26 steps. No, that's too, too much. Let's do 20. And let's drag them a little bit closer, see if they match up. Uh, let's try 21. This is simple math. You would just multiply 15 by 20 uh, and see if it reaches uh, the height to the second floor of the average wall, 300, 320, something like that. So that reaches about right because I have a ceiling that's 20 units tall. So 21 steps should be all right. So you also have to take into consideration the height of the steps and the number of steps to reach to the second floor. So that looks right. I'm going to hit accept. Let's jump back to selection. Let's spawn. And here 
are the steps reaching to the second floor. So also something to consider as you create your steps. So use these standard dimensions for the wall, for the door, and for the steps as your starting point. And then of course modify based on what you need. So scale is such an important part of environment creation. And I hope this tutorial has helped to make you build your environments to correct scale and judge proportions using these dimensions. So make sure you use the scale reference, the character reference inside your environments, Use a mannequin, use a cube, doesn't matter what you use, just use something. The mannequin is a great starting point. I use this mannequin everywhere across my environment. And then use these standard dimensions to begin creating. Now, if you want to learn how to actually create environments, how to use the modeling mode, how to use lighting and light your environments, and just how to get started with environment creation using Unreal Engine 5, then download Unreal Engine 5 Fundamentals Volume 1 tutorial course. It is now available to download and you can do so by visiting the link in the description box or if you are on the website watching this on worldofleveldesign.com there will be a link to download the course as well. And begin creating your own environments and start using Unreal Engine 5.